here we continue discussion the equivalence relation between measurable functions. It's a very quick comments. Uh, it's quick comments about the clauses of equivalent functions. Uh, the need for the clauses of equivalent functions, uh, yeah, this need is explained by the following example. If I have, for instance, the sequence of functions like that, as a sequence of shrinking indicators, it is quite obvious, for instance, that this sequence converts to zero almost everywhere. It is, at the same time, also obvious that this function will also converge to indicator of the single point zero almost everywhere as well. Um, which means that the almost everywhere convergence, in some sense, it, it, it contradicts to our uh, conventional understanding of limits. Uh, and, uh, and part of this conventional understanding of limits is that the limiting point is always unique. Whereas here, you see, for, for the same sequence of functions, the limiting point is not unique. In fact, you can even take this example even further by saying that the same sequence of functions will converge almost everywhere to Dirichlet function. It's the sum of the all of the indicators of rational points. We all know this is a Dirichlet function, and this is still true because uh, this function is zero almost everywhere, and that's why the sequence of these indicators will converge to this function to this function almost everywhere. Uh, so this bad behavior of almost everywhere convergence and by implication also also the similar behavior will be will will be applicable to um, measured topology convergence this bad behavior uh, explains why we need to consider not the functions individually but we have to group these functions into the classes of equivalent functions and that's how we do it so if I have a measure space uh, and if I have a function which is measurable, then first I'll observe the following few statements about this. First one is this, 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 if I have another function on my measure space which is equivalent to my original function f, and being equivalent, you remember, being equivalent means, uh, let me just finish the statement first, I, uh, if it is equivalent and g is also measurable, if you forgot uh, from the previous video, being equivalent means uh, means that the measure of the space where g is not equal to f, this measure is zero. That's, that's how we define two functions to be equivalent. So, if one of them is measurable, then every equivalent function to this given function is also will be measurable. Now, the other three properties, that's the relations of equivalence relation, and they all true for this particular choice of equivalence relation, and that's what it is. Uh, every function is equivalent to itself, because in this case this set will be just empty set. Every function, if, if function is equivalent to g, uh, to some other function, then this is also true in the other order. If f equivalent to g, then g equivalent to f. And also we have this transitivity property, which says that if f equivalent to g, and g equivalent to h, then f equivalent to h. These three properties, that's the definition, uh, that's the fundamental properties of the equivalent relations and via the fundamental theorem about the equivalence relations we can conclude that the class of all functions, class of all measurable functions in fact, can be split into the class, uh, the collection, sorry, of all measurable functions can be split into the classes of equivalences which we will denote by f bar, so it's a collection of all functions g equivalent to the given function f. Now, so that's the main approach, how we're going to tackle the problem of non-uniqueness of the limit when we talk about the convergence almost everywhere or convergence in measure topology. In relation to these classes of equivalent functions, so we can introduce the operations, for instance, the sum of two classes of functions will be the class of the sum of the representatives from each of the individual class. Uh, scalar product of the class of functions will be scalar product. It will be the class of the scalar product of, of a representative from a class. 
and the pointwise product of classes will be the class of the pointwise product of two representatives from each class individually. These definitions they are correct. I'm not going to check that, but I claim it is the, the, it is a correct definition because and when I say that I mean if I take another representative from the class F and if I take another representative from class G, then and if I perform these operations according to these definitions, now using these different representatives F1 and G1, then I will still have that the sum of this new couple of representatives will still be in the same class F plus G, the scalar product of this representative F1, new representative F1 will be in this class, and the product will be also in the corresponding class. That's why from this moment on, when we talk about this symbol, before this symbol didn't mean, didn't mean anything beside the fact that when we wrote F belongs to this, we meant F is measurable. From now on, this symbol will have more formal meaning, and that's the meaning of it. It's the collection of all classes of equivalences of measurable functions. This collection can be equipped with the operations, like this, correctly defined operations. More importantly, this collection can be equipped also with the convergences, like almost everywhere convergence and measure convergence. And when you talk about the classes rather than individual functions, we no longer have this problem of non-uniqueness of the limit because in terms of classes, all these functions, zero, indicator of zero and Dirichlet function, all these functions, they belong to the same equivalence class, equivalence class of function zero. That's what I said here, if I have a sequence of classes, fn, and if I have another function f, and if I know that representatives fn converge to f in measure topology, and if I choose another representatives from my classes, such that this another representatives converge in measure to some new function f dash, then we can conclude, and the this is based on my on my presentation in the in my previous video in the lemma which I proved there that this new function f dash will also be from my original class f bar.